Yeah, I'm just going to introduce you to Paolo Quattroni, our Head of Alliance Strategy Engagement, who I'm sure that many of you know anyway, who will just give a brief overview around the Alliance. Thank you, everyone. And thanks, David. Uh, apologies in advance. I have a very low voice today. I lost it in the last couple of days, but I got some of it back. So thank you for being here today. And it's a great pleasure for me uh, to be able to introduce you to the UKL Data Research Alliance. A little bit intimidating to speaking now after Sir Mark and Claire as well, and after all of the hubs highlights today. But it is an opportunity actually to tell you how we think the Alliance can really help this greater collaboration even because you are part of the Alliance, and many of the organizations in the room today um, are already part of this partnership. So what is the Alliance? The Alliance is a, a network or a partnership of leading healthcare and research organizations that are united to establish best practice for the better use of health data. We aim for the Alliance to become an internationally recognized partnership that is known elsewhere, even outside of the UK, uh, to enable trustworthy access to health-relevant data and its network to deliver public benefit. So why the Alliance was created in the first place? It was created in 2019, and the idea was to really bring together the UK health data assets from the four nations and to drive standards, to drive technologies and tools, to better use data and to better drive access to data. We know there is a big problem with accessing data and using data for research, innovation, and for other purposes as well. We wanted to change that. This is exactly what we are trying to do today as well. And obviously, trustworthiness and in the use of health-related data and patient benefit, it's what we're aiming and what you all are aiming. The graph that you see there is just showing you um, how diverse uh, the member organizations are. And this is really one of the strengths of the Alliance. You can see we have public bodies, we have NHS England, we have uh, medical charities, national trusts, many of the partners in the hubs, the hubs and the data science centers themselves. And we want to use that diversity of perspectives, and we want to use standards, and we want to streamline processes as much as possible. We think the Alliance can really bring people together to collaborate better, to share knowledge and best practice. So this is you. Many of your organizations are in, those, uh, in this slide. And it, this is just to tell you that we grew quite a lot in the past three and a half years. We went from 10 founding members to more than 70 today. So we're quite a big community that we can um, use for the better use of health data going forward. What is the Alliance impact to date? So I'd like to spend a couple of minutes on uh, two slides, two or three slides, just to tell you what has been the work so far. And some of the work that the hubs have highlighted has really linked to the work of the Alliance. The hubs have been integral to the Alliance itself. So the first thing that the Alliance members did when they joined the Alliance, and they continuously do, is making data discoverable and accessible. This is done by the Innovation Gateway. But at the time, in 2019, some of you may know that there was the NIHR Health Data Finder, and at the time, there were 18 data sets shown on that portal. Today, we have more than 700 data sets dis discoverable now from the UK Health Data Research Alliance members, which is a significant increase. So how are we influencing the health data landscape? And I was really pleased to see that many of, um, of you highlighted some of the work that we've done. But here, just to show three examples, for instance, a data and connectivity program, which was COVID-19 related, and that has enabled access to key data sets, and that has really had an impact on some research on COVID-19. We have driven standards then on data um, and utility. You might have heard about the utility framework that is now used for looking at utility of data sets. And finally, the trust research environment work. You have heard about HDI UK being working with other partners, with the NHS. But it is really the alliance and the convening role that it has had and the input from all of the organizations within the alliance that has produced the development of standards and the development of practices that have been published through green papers and white papers over the last two years. So this has really been demonstrated by the Goldacre Review that have obviously acknowledged some of that work and by the UK investment in the last uh, few months. And finally, just another uh, output that the Alliance has produced that is particularly important, and I think this has been mentioned throughout the day. 
um, how do we demonstrate that how data is used for innovation and for research? And how do we tell patients how it is used? So one of the pieces of work that the Alliance has driven was around standards for data use registers. A data use register is a public record of how data is being used, by whom, and for what purposes. I think Sir Mark uh, Walport mentioned, do we know how money is spent? Do we know how the research that is funded then is actually um, going to be concluded? So do we know how data is used and what are the outputs from the data? This is the type of work that we have looked at. And with the Alliance, we have really listened to the public and we have convened a community of experts, both data custodians, researchers, and the public to discuss data use transparency and what was needed. We developed the standards for data use registers, so this is available for data custodians to publish their data uses and to actually look at a standard way to publish that, so that this is clear for researchers, but also for the public, how data is being used. And finally, what we have done is taking that standard and using it to inform the Innovation Gateway Data Use Register. As you know, Alliance members are using already the Innovation Gateway, but they now can also use a data use register using the standards that have been produced by the Alliance. So we have really convened the community, developed the standards, and then implemented the standards. And we are encouraging other organizations to do so and to look at the standards for data use registers. And one thing I wanted to mention as well, and I think we have to thank many of the organizations as well in this room, but the participation of the Alliance members has been crucial in various activities. And this is just to highlight the importance on improving representation within the health research community. You might have heard about the Black Internship Program, which was launched by HDI UK to tackle underrepresentation of black professionals in the health data science sector. And we have many Alliance members who have really participated into this work. And today we have 80 internships taken up and 44 organizations. So thanks to those, we have seen an increase in uptake and also quite a lot of interest in that space. And finally, going forward. So those were some, a couple of examples of what we have done so far. But how are we going to build on this work today on the partnership that we have right now with all of the members and what we are going to do in the future. I think uh, it was interesting this morning as well to hear from uh, Janet Valentine who, who showed us what were the priorities for, for, for the sector 10 years ago. And I can see there, there are some similarities. So what we are hoping to do with the Alliance is really building the UK research data infrastructure and services, both with HDI UK services, but also the general UK infrastructure. So we think that the Alliance has a role in shaping the development, and uh, also it will be directly informed by the public and by the researchers. Just to show you that green box is where the Alliance sit and is together with the hubs and data science centers, which we hope they will have a very strong network and powerful voice in the Alliance. And then you see that the Alliance will drive their work through um, development of standards. And those standards will be in the areas of technology services ecosystem that is needed, trust and transparency, very highly needed, including information governance improvements, usable data, including interoperability and reusability of data, and capacity building to increase um, and upskill uh, data science skills in the space. So we think we can work on the standards together with the community, but also drive adoption of that standard. So finally, I just wanted to say that obviously all of this is about collaboration and concerted action, and we can't do this alone. As HDI UK, we are just convening the Alliance, but it is the participation of the Alliance members that will drive that. So today, in the session that will start after the break, um, we have four Alliance members, four representatives from uh, different Alliance member organizations who will talk to us about why they joined the Alliance, why they were interested in the first place, but then maybe they will focus on uh, specific areas that we think we would like to bring forward in terms of development of standards. So Phil um, will tell us about technology services ecosystem. Phil Quinlan is from University of Nottingham. We'll introduce him later. And then Andrew Rodham from uh, Our Future Health will talk about trust and transparency and also why he's joined the Alliance. Cheryl Buttersby from Imperial College London, representative, 
representing the national neonatal research database will talk about data usability. And then Carol Morris from Public Health Scotland will talk about skills and expertise. So we will have a break now, I think. But one thing I wanted to mention, you might have seen in this room, in each corner of the room, uh, four boards that really are about those thematic areas that I talked about, technology, trust, um, usability, and expertise. And what we would like to do is hear your thoughts about what should be the priority around those thematic areas and um, what are the main challenges that we should address. So if, if you, throughout the break or before you leave today, you can share your thoughts, that would be really appreciated. And if you're interested to work with us in one of those, uh, you can even leave your contact. So just say thank you and um, yeah. Back at four o'clock. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs>